morning there, Saints. Uh, about, have you ever had one of them times, especially a morning, when you wake up and there is, there's a word on your mind and you can't get anything else done it's just consuming you. I mean, you can do other things. You can get up, go to the kitchen, get a cup of coffee, but the word's there. You can sit down, you can get the morning started, and the word is still there. And until you get that word looked at, or that issue looked at, nothing else really. You can't even hear anything. Uh, I got up this morning, I didn't say good morning to my wife, which isn't rare, you know. I, a lot of mornings I don't say good morning, I just, man. Uh, but this morning, and, and I haven't got anything prepared, and I want a really good understanding to come out of this, not just knowledge, I want a really good understanding to come out of this. So this morning, you're going to go along as I go along. Now, I have already looked into uh, this uh, word. And it, it stems from a portion of Scripture. Let me type it in here. Ah, what is it there? It's already there. <laughs> ah, that's not it. That's not it. I mean, that's one of them, so I'll go ahead and I'll pull that up, and then I'll go over here and I'll pull up the other one. Uh, okay, now there's two of them, and, and the reason uh, I'm here is because the wife and I have been doing a little, uh, we've gotten back in uh, a, a reading. Of, of the word and 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 this came up in the conversation the other day uh, not this portion but above it wives submit yourselves to your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord husbands love wives and be not bitter against them now here we see the word bitter, uh, and what was read from a Google search, which you had to be careful about these things, was uh, do not be harsh unto them, or something like that. So, uh, and we're, we're going to get off that because that's something else. Uh, and then we continue on, and on, this is in Colossians, uh, what man calls 321, and it says, Children obey parents in all things, uh, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Uh, here's the part we're going to talk about. Now, when we pick up our scriptures, this is what we read. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger lest they be discouraged. Okay. But when we pick up Scripture, this is how we ought to read. Because you, there are words in Scriptures that are italicized. I try to avoid them when I read. Yeah. But I want to understand without them. That word put in there is to help us in our understanding and a lot of times it doesn't so I just try to avoid them and it makes my study easier so let's reread that again fathers provoke not your children lest they be discouraged now Ephesians and Colossians were written about the same time and I understand why they put that in there because in, in Ephesians, it says, And ye fathers, provoke your ch not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Admonition of the Lord. That's correction of the Lord. Okay, so see, 
but but it didn't even say anger there, did it? It said, and fathers provoke your children, not provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and demolishing of the. Okay, now let's just be for real. Let's get an honest engine here for a minute. There ain't a child alive out there that I've ever seen. They might be. And I'm sure there is in some cultures because the cultures, they do actually honor their parents. But I have yet <laughs> to see a child alive. And I, I've seen a lot of children. <laughs> that don't get angry. No. So, if it, if it was, as in Colossians, fathers, provoke not your children to anger, let me tell you, saints, many of us has failed in that issue. And many more are going to fail in that issue. Look, you, if you're a father, in this world that we are in, you are going to do, say, or whatever, something that's going to provoke that child to anger. So does God really mean, because look, it says, Father, provoke not your children, and they got a child size to anger. If that was the real deal, just plain out the way it sounds. There ain't a father one that's not sinful every day. Just about. Just about. And I didn't think about that. Would the Lord tell us something? Give us a charge like this. Knowing it's impossible not to provoke a child out of child side word, anger. Because if we did that, then we are in a transgressional sin. Would God do that? No. No. So it doesn't mean what it sounds like. So there's got to be something deeper in this understanding. And we all want to understand. Okay, so we're going to read them again. Fathers, provoke not your children lest they be discouraged. Father, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the admonishing of the Lord. Okay, now that's just two. Now, y'all know me. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a King James person. I do not say you have to read King James because I believe that the Holy Spirit can speak to you just as good as he speaks to me, whether I'm reading King James or you're reading the, the Easy SV or the whatever, whatever version of God's Word. I am not that person that's going to beat you up with the King James. Because I believe that my God and His Spirit, He can speak to you even if you don't read the Bibles. Because you don't have one yet. So, I have out here today all my stuff. I have my Bible. Word of God. I love it. I read it. As a matter of fact, like I showed a bunch of you, this is mine. I'm going to kill it down here a little bit. This is my Bible. Okay. I've read Paul's epistles so much they've came out of my Bible. <laughs> I didn't tear them out. They've just come out. Okay. So I'm going to set that down there. I'm going to raise it back up so I can see. It's going to be quite a long one today. But hey, this is fellowship. This is what I like to do. This is what I really do. I enjoy to have somebody on there and talk back to me like Brother Travis does every now and then. Uh, okay. Uh, then, of course, we've got our strong. If you're a big studier of the word this is a necessity yeah it is uh, I can look up a word and see where that word is used uh, it also helps me find uh, words similar to such such and so on okay let's look up something 
Uh, this this got me interested today. Now this is my new Augur Bible dictionary. This was given to me by a pastor man named Brother Brother Wayne. Uh, Brother Wayne was an amazing man of God. In, in, in my eyes, of what I knew of what a man of God was supposed to be at the time, I knew Brother Wayne. I hadn't seen him for a long time. I, and that's somebody I miss in my, in my life. Uh, so let's, let's read here. Anger. Now, anger, we, we hear all that. I'm, I'm so angry. I am so angry. Are you really? What does anger mean? What does becoming angry mean? Anger is a, that's when we become angry. We are anger. Let, but so let's look at anger. Anger. The emotion of instant displeasure and indignation arising from the feeling of injury done or injury intended or from the discovery of offense against law. Let's read that one more time because I found that very interesting. Anger. The emotion of instant displeasure and indignation arising from the feeling, the feeling of feeling of injury done or injury intended or from the discovery of offense against law. Anger comes from a feeling or a discovery. Interesting. Which one do you think? Think about that. So if anger comes from an instant displeasure of a feeling, you know, what some people have done to them, if it was done to me, I wouldn't get angry. Or what I have done to me and some people have done to them, they wouldn't get angry. Why? It's a feeling of an individual. The less we get out of our feelings, the less that instant displeasure arising from the feeling will cease. Okay, let's go to the other one though. Now this one I found interesting. Or from the discovery of offense against law. Are we fixing to get into some understanding of what anger means and what anger is? That's one of them two sides of the coin I always talk about. Okay, so I'm just going to continue reading in the Unger's Bible Dictionary. The anger <coughs> attributed to God is that part of God that stands opposed to man's disobedience, obstinacy, O-B-S-T-I-N-A-C-Y. Uh, it's got parentheses here. Especially in resisting the gospel and sin and manifest itself in the punishing the same. In other words, the anger attributed to God uh, against uh, sin. That's what God gets angry about. Uh, man's disobedience, his transgressional sin, and so on. Okay. 
much so. Now this, because a lot of people, if they don't understand this. Really, they don't. Maybe you know one of them. Maybe you need to talk to one of them today. Help them understand this. Okay, anger is not evil per se. Being as love an original substitute or another one in big word S U S C E P T I B I L I T Y of our natures. Our nature, excuse me. If anger were in itself sinful, how could God himself be angry? Now Paul commands the Ephesians that when we are angry, in Ephesians 4, 26, it's got written there, commands the Ephesians that when angry, that they are not to sin. Paul does not forbid the being of anger in itself and could not forbid it because there is a holy anger, a righteous, let's do it that way, a righteous anger. What is righteous and unrighteous? Righteous is the right thing. Unrighteousness is n not the right thing. There's, we all know there's a right and a wrong. Right way, wrong way. So, it is a righteous anger, which is the spur to, uh, this is interesting, which is the spur to virtue as there is also a divine anger, but the being angry is to be without sin. Anger is sinful. Listen. Anger is sinful when it arises too soon. Interesting on that. And, and it really... This is good stuff. It's good stuff this morning. It's simple when it arises too soon without reflection. When the injury, <coughs> you know that feeling, that awakens it is only apparent. In other words, it's just been spotted. Uh, when it is when it is disappropriate to the offense. So, anger is simple when it arises too soon without reflection. When the injury that awakens it is only apparent when it is disappropriate of the offense, which is transferred from the guilty to the innocent. When it is too long, protracted and becomes revengeful. So there's another time anger angers a sin. And here it's got in parentheses Matthew five twenty two, Ephesians four twenty six, and Colossians three eight. Okay, so anger there's a two sides to every coin. Remember, there's a righteous anger and an unrighteous anger. Okay, so fathers, provoke not your children. Let's get back to Colossians 3, 2. It don't say the anger. Because let's be for real. By that definition right there, by that definition of the de defilement that we see in, in Bible usage of anger, it could, is, it, is, it pos is it possible for us to never, never, and keep this commandment 100%, is it possible for us, the uh, fathers, to not provoke their children to italicize, remember, it's not that, to anger? No, it is not possible, no way, no shape, no form, no how, because that would mean actually a father could never, really never, say anything to his children as far as, uh, uh, let's go back over here. Ephesians, uh, but bring them up in the nurture and the correction of the Lord. In this world, <clears throat> that's not near impossible. So, 
So, what does all this mean? What does all this mean? Uh, if we look at Ephesians 6, 4, I believe we see a more purer, cleaner, spoken word from Paul. Remember, Ephesians and Colossians are wrote, wrote about in the same year time, about the same time. This is when Paul was in, he was having all these pens going on and uh, sending out multiple uh, letters. Uh, and ye fathers, Provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and, and correction of the Lord. Okay. I want to go back to the defilement of anger. Because, see, now this will make sense if we look at it. But bring them up in the nurture and correction of the Lord. Okay. Remember one of the definitions of anger? One of them was a feeling. Remember this one, though? Anger, the emotion from the discovery of offense against the law. Now, if we understand that when we read it, basically what it's saying is, You know them parents that say, do as I say and don't do as I do. If I'm bringing up my children in the nurture and the correction of the Lord, and, I, and my lifestyle is do as I say, not as I do, I'm going to provoke my children to wrath. Back to Colossians. I'm going to provide or provoke not your children lest they be discouraged. I'm going to discourage my children because I live a life of do as I say, not as I do. Now, if our lifestyle is this, follow me as I follow Christ, and they see us goob it up. No, come on, man. We all make goobers. <laughs> we goob it up every now and then. But they see us grieve over that. They see that uh, we don't want that as part of our life. They see a lifestyle of holiness. Uh, and, and holiness is this as well. Look, brother, sit. We make mistakes, we grieve over it. And I mean, we grieve over it. And, and the, our grievance is just as apparent as if we hit our finger with a hammer. People will notice it. Do you know that's called coming out of her? That's one of the charges. Because in the world, when they make a goob up, it doesn't grieve them. Honestly, most time I did it back out of the world is intentional. <laughs> but I mean, even when I made a goob up out there, but mistakenly, it didn't grieve me. I just went, carried on and went on. So, see, even that is coming out of her. Even that, uh, you wanting to not be like the world will be evident to your children. Uh, if they, if you're preaching God's word, and and and, and I'm, hey, I'm gonna let you in on a secret too. Do you know you can preach? You can be 40 years old, have your child at 11. Now listen to this, cause I'm telling you, I can't give you a nugget. You can be 40 years old. You can be reading your Bible since you was in the, in the 10. So that's what you've been reading the Bible 30 years. You can have a child of 11 or 20, and, 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 and you can go to church on Sunday, and you can go to church on Wednesday, and you can send them to Bible camp in the summertime, and, and you can do all these things. And that little child will watch you. And I'm going to speak honest here as I can. 
that little child can have better understanding of God's Word than you do after 30 years of reading the Bible and going to a building. And they see you transgress God's law. And at that point in time, you've just caused them to become discouraged. Hold up, my little dog out. Hold up, baby. Come on out of the car. Please, Did that, did that bell, did the bell just go off? Did that bell just go off? Let's go back to these two things here. Father, provoke not your children, lest they be discouraged. Fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the correction of the Lord. How do we bring them up? We bring them up by being an example to them. We see in the scripture in Philippians, Paul speaks of those examples Follow me as I follow. And when these children see us speaking a lifestyle versus what they see us living a lifestyle, you're not bringing them up in the nurture and the admonishing of the Lord. And what you're actually doing is you're provoking your children. Let's go back. You are discouraging your children. If they do not see the power of God living and, and coming in, in God's divine grace, that, that so gracious power he's given us, and in, in, in living that lifestyle we're told to be as an example to. If we can't be a light to our children, how do you expect to be a light to the world? Oh no, I lost my dog. Get me! He next door pooping in the neighbor's yard. <laughs> okay. If we cannot be the light to our children, how can we be a light to the world? Think about that for a minute. Okay, so I wanna I I wanna look at something here. Uh I want to look at a couple more uh, verses. I, I think we, we've kind of got, I, I, I have, and if I've let you down in, in, in helping you get an, an established, a better understanding of this, uh, you know, all you got to do is, hey, get on there and type a comment. Hey, Brother Andy, can we get this a little bit deeper? Uh, because that's what we're here for. Before here for the perfecting of each other. I'm a saint. You're a saint. You help perfect me. I help perfect you. When they say iron sharpens iron. So I'm not just here to perfect, help perfect you. Brother Sidra's out there. Hey, y'all, y'all both be here to help perfect me too. So. Let's go do, I'm going to. Pull up here. Do da do da day. Oh, never mind. Excuse me. Where am I at? Da 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 da. I need a new one. Uh, that's what I want. Now. I pull up, it's called Parallel Universe, excuse me, Parallel Verses on Colossians 3.21. NIV, fathers do not embitter your children or they will become discouraged. See, embitter, we don't speak like that no more. These are words that we need to go stu word study to get understanding. Embitter. Bitter. Uh, ESV. 
Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Now, see, a lot of people be whining. They left out to anger in there. And look at that ESV. You know, really, to anger wasn't in there in the first place. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger. That's the King James. Lest they be discouraged. To anger was a tattersized. Fathers, do not ag antagonize your children. Boy, that's a big word, ain't it? So that they will not become discouraged. That's the NASB. NLT. Fathers, do not aggravate your children. Okay, that ain't going to happen in this world, okay? I'm sorry, fathers. You're just going to aggravate. <laughs> They're going to get aggravated at you. Or they will become discouraged. CSB. Man, there's so many that. And, wow. Fathers, do not. Okay. I'm old boy. I'm old country boy. E X A S P E R A T E. Exasperate your children. Okay. I don't even know what that means. Uh, so let's say don't become discouraged. Uh, But the article's good. Remember the anger thing? It was when they saw it's offense of the law, and you can be in your Bible for 30 years, and you can have an 11-year-old child, and they look at you, and they know in their heart, their little heart, that that God's been speaking to because they kind of sit more serious about your their relationship with God. They talk to God more than you do. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. And in their spirit, they're just, wow. Just, they don't know because they're little children that just something ain't right with Paul. <laughs> this, is, this is good. This is a pretty good article. When addressing wives, husbands, and children, Paul adds additional instructions for the Christian fathers. Well, this closely resembles the instructions given in Ephesians 6 4, warning fathers not to provoke anger in their children. Uh, some render the phrase uh, Paul uses here in Colossians as do not cause your children to become resentful. I like that. Do not be do not be the cause of your children to become resent, resentful. The idea is that of stirring up or causing problems for your child unfairness and aggravation in particular are to be avoided. Fathers are not to be problem makers for their children, but rather providers and examples for their sons and daughters. Fathers who provoke their children and now there's another word that we've done a word study on before that word provoke Fathers who provoke their children can cause discouragement. It's not it's not about don't provoke them to anger. It's don't provoke them as to make them become discouraged. God forbid. Ooh, ooh, that I as a parent or I as an example within to those in the house of God that through my actions, my deeds, I cause a little one to become discouraged in God, in the power of God, in God's nature. If I'm always looking at my little child and, and remember, they're little children. Spiritual and physical, same difference in my eyes, in my ears, okay? If I'm talking to a little child, and I'm one of them folks with that type of religion, you know, I'm like, you, you met them, we've all met them. And I tell that little child, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then that little child watches me live. A defeated, beat the hell up life. 
whine about your bills, complain about this, I buy that. I, I can provoke that child and I can call through them action I can cause that child yeah, to become discouraged in God. <coughs> Children rely on their father to offer encouragement instead of discouragement. When fathers fail in this aspect, it can have a long-lasting impact on the well-being of their child, physical and spiritual. Thank God there's more than one father out there in the spiritual. Ephesians 6, 4 mirrors this part of Colossians. Fathers are called to both offer discipline and teach God's ways to their children. This is not to be delegated to a mother or other influencers. Oh, let's read that part again. This is not to be delegated to a mother slash and or, because see, sometimes they ain't even delegated to a mother. It's delegated to others. Nanny. The public school system. Now, the church building. Hit them up. They know better than what to teach them than I do, so I'm just going to step back and let it go. You just failed. Yeah, you got big, fat, red elf. All right, fathers are called to be most disciplined and teach God's ways to their children. This is not to be delegated to a mother or other influences. Spiritual instruction involves the support of all, all family members, but is ultimately, listen, Father, you hear me up, but it's ultimately, ultimately, how do we know it's ultimately the personal responsibility of the Father? How do we know that? Because a lot of people say, well, there ain't no man, there ain't no woman, and all that. You know, they, oh, God, I hate them people. Uh, but, it, but it's personally, ultimately, the personal, how do we know that? Right there. Fathers, you want to answer for stuff. Okay, so. Da, 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 da. I think that is about the end of, the, of the, the keepers that I found before I started this. Yeah, we're not going to get into the word provoked today. <laughs> uh, so, let's go back to the, uh, uh, I want to look up this in here on, on this anger. Uh, uh, Mark 3, 5. Mark 3, 5. Boom, boom. Uh, da, 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 All right. And they watched him. Uh, that's a 3, 2. Uh, and they watched him. Who's to him? Him was the, the Lord. Whether him, whether he would heal on the Sabbath day. Who is to he, that's the Lord, uh, that they might accuse him. Who is they, the ones that, we all know who they are. That was a group of people that had a form of religion. Uh, and everybody, well, that was the Pharisees. That could have been the Pharisees, Sadducees, Rhodes. It could have been a whole group of different type of people. But the, the days. But yeah, it, it was a, the religious folks. So, uh, uh, and the religious folks was watching him. Uh, whether uh, the Lord would heal on the Sabbath day, that they, uh, the religious folks, might accuse him. Uh, and he said unto the man with the withered hand, uh, that's the Lord said, uh, stand forth. And he saith unto them, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath day? In other words, is it lawful to work on the Sabbath day or to do evil, to save lives or to kill? 
and they held their peace. Why? <laughs> they, uh, here it is right here. And when he had looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their heart, the Lord said to the man, stretch forth your hand. And the old man stretched it out. And his hand was restored. Okay. Let's go back up here. And the Pharisees went forth straightway, took counsel with the Herodians against him. Oh, right there, see, Pharisees and Herodians, we know that. I guarantee the Sadducees is hanging around somewhere close to. Hey, let's go back. <coughs> let's go back to that. And, and when the Lord God we looked around the mind on them with anger. They had a police chief being grieved for the hardness of their hearts. Anger. A discoverment of offense of the law. Fathers, that's the anger that it speaks of on, on not to provoke in your children. Don't sin in front of your kids. Basically, I guess would be an easy way to say it. But when the Lord looked around on them with anger, what did he see? They're speaking of law. Is it lawful to do? And he, he looked and he saw they was in the trench they was in sin and it grieved him because of the hardness of their heart that is the perfect example fathers oh yeah mothers I, you know you included right y'all do know that right you women folk but fathers, that is the perfect example of do not provoke your children to wrath, to anger, however you want to say. It's when they, like the Lord, look at you and they see a heart that's not for God. Now, I'm going to go to one more. This is going to be one of them long ones today. I told you in the beginning, it's going to take a while. Romans 10, 19. This is more of a study one than a teaching one. Because remember I told you, I'm bringing all my books. We're going to do this together. Romans 10, 19. We're going to start. Yeah, i just say 16. I'm going to bug it off my computer. Gimp, get in the yard, baby. Uh. We'll start at 16. Romans 10, what man calls 16. But they had not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? And then faith by hearing, and hearing, see, there's an italicized word. Uh, and I just skipped. <laughs> so then faith by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have you not? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. Now, here's where the word anger is. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by no people. Italicized in there by 
italicize them that are no people by a foolish nation I will anger you okay wait a minute okay God is going to provoke us provoke someone that's what said right here listen God is going to provoke someone to anger. God is going to provoke someone to jealousy. So, is there a time? This, 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 God tells us not to provoke our children to wrath and anger, and then over here God says he's going to provoke the Israelites. There's a, there's, y'all, if the light bulb ain't went on right there on, on children of God. Okay, but let's just keep it simple today. There is a time that we do provoke and a time not to provoke. Excuse me, I had a little gassy there. So let's get back to just what was on this morning. Brothers and sisters, I know there's a lot of parents out there. And, 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 and I know this as well. Among those lot of parents, there's very little sound doctrine available to parents. This is where it's a very needful thing for the saints. Wise counsel and sound doctrine being given to the parents so they can in return bring up, what does it say, nurture and admonishment, nurture and correction of the Lord. We've got to get our parts right. Now, I, I'm not a parent. I never had no children. I've been around a bunch of children and I've helped raise them and I probably screwed up one or two of them back in the day. Uh, but according to scripture there are children out there that I can take under my wing as well and help feed and, and such uh, and there's children out there you can take even though you might not have that physical child bless your blood child you could help raise up that spiritual child Oh, and, and, and yeah, by the way, if you don't, and you've been given what's expected of you, and if you don't, you're going to answer to God for that. If you've been given something, and you don't use it for the benefit of the kingdom, if you go bear it in the field, you're going to answer to God on that. So, but. Do not provoke your child. Do not provoke another saint either. Unto discouragement. Because they see a violation of God's law coming from you and it discourages them so hey I'll see y'all next time around and y'all know I'm always praying for you for those things need for you and if you ever need to reach out hey I'm here